Hello guys, Sir Grandalot here. I wanted to talk a bit about my new uh, Omega Noel deck uh, because a few people asked me to make a more in-the-depth guide rather than a 4-5 minute showcase uh, like my last video was. And my previous deck looked like this. I had Diona here uh, in the last slot and this deck was very slow. Uh, it was based around the fact that all these three characters are very resilient, uh, they provide shield, uh, two of them provide healing, uh, Diona is very difficult to take down for most opponent and this deck took the game to very late uh, turns and eventually it allowed Noel to take over the game but it's a fairly slow deck what this change does uh, as well as the changes in the card that we will see soon is you give up a bit of, a bit of resilience but Ganyu still has some damage reduction uh, via her elemental skill so she's not bad at all and you gain a lot more damage, and also you gain a lot more AoE damage. This will be very important uh, for reasons that I will explain soon. The deck now looks like this. Uh, it's a combo deck. Uh, what this means, and they may put off uh, some people, is that you need to assemble the pieces of a combo. And the deck is set up in a way that gives you a ton of draw power. There are really an insane amount of cards that allow you to draw more cards. And there's a ton of food. Um, the Enary um, on, on the field uh, makes all the food uh, cyclable cards. So, of course, you know, this one costs zero. You heal up for one point and you draw an extra card. But there are times when you can also cycle this. Uh, you just throw it on one of your characters who's going to take even a small amount of damage. You're going to draw a card, your get is going to be uh, thinner and you have higher chances to draw the cards that you need. Uh, same for this, you can just throw it away and draw another card, uh, especially if you have the second copy in hand. Because this is a card that you really only want to play once during the match, uh, I've never needed to play it uh, more than once. So if you have both copies in hand uh, and an area on the field, you can just pay one to cycle it, uh, your deck will be thinner and you will be having... Uh, uh, more useful cards in your hand, very likely. And then there is a lot of card engine, you know, as usual, we uh, Pot of Kokomi, uh, Based Lieben. Now, for a deck uh, that is a combo deck, uh, there are most cards of a combo that are a one-off. Uh, Noel's Talent, Wolf's Greystone, and the um, Charm of, I don't remember the names, I'm terrible with names, this thing. I will never remember the name, so I will not even mention it. Now, because some of these cards are a one-off, uh, there are two things that can happen, and every now and then will happen to you. Uh, one thing that will happen is that these three could be the last three cards in your deck. Uh, you can still win, uh, because Noel, even by herself, can deal a lot of damage, but it's going to be harder. And the other thing that could happen is that there could be a match where you want two of these, and instead you draw one of these. And it feels a little bit bad. Um, there are some choices uh, that you have to make uh, when it comes to deck building because by running a one-off of these cards it means that you have three extra cards that you can put in your deck and for me those three extra cards were a couple of extra foods which provide uh, utility as well as uh, um, card generation and uh, uh, Mona's card because I used to have one of these and no Mona card but I added Mona card uh, because it, it can be extremely valuable because people cannot play around it, people don't expect this to be played from hand. But if this dude is on the field, they know that things can happen. I'm only playing one Paimon, uh, because although it's a very good card, three elements of one specific kind can sometimes be a little bit difficult. Uh, because you have to consider that the first few turns that you play, you want to draw as much as possible, and you also need to uh, toggle around between your characters to avoid getting the Geodude or Ganyo into much trouble. And you also need to use them to dish out a little bit of damage. So it can be a little bit difficult to, to have two of these in the deck for me. Uh, one is okay. A thing that I like to do uh, when I build a deck from scratch uh, or when I make a lot of changes to a deck that I already have is um, go to play against the NPCs. Uh, the reason is that I don't need to worry about a lot of stuff uh, uh, like the other player playing extremely slowly or um, the limit uh, at the end of a turn. 
and in general I want to throw away back uh, in the deck all the food and um, things that don't do anything in the first few turns and keep all the card draw and dice generation. And in general, I would like to start with Ganyu, uh, but I'm glad that um, in addition to the card draw, we got this, the, the Elemental Resonance Stone, because this can create a, a very interesting situation that we can showcase right now. Uh, so I usually want to go with Ganyu first, when I go first, uh, because I really want to set up uh, her Elemental skill, uh, because it provides... Uh, uh, damage reduction and eventually on turn 2 you would really like to have uh, Ganyu's burst uh, on the field uh, to start dealing damage to the uh, opponent's character, supply cryo um, to all of them uh, and this will allow Geodude to, do, to deal more damage. When I'm going second I usually want Geodude on the field uh, because he has the shield, he has a built-in uh, damage reduction which makes him much tankier. But there is one situation in which I want Geodude on the field when I go first, and it's when I draw the Elemental uh, Resonance uh, dice thingy. Because all his skills are pretty cheap, they all cost uh, 3 dice to cast. So if you have that, uh, what you can do is uh, 2 normal attacks and the burst, or normal attack, elemental skill and burst. That's enough damage to kill um, an enemy. Uh, and uh, against some decks, uh, you will be able to pull it off. Uh, because a lot of people will not play around it. Uh, they will cast, um, I don't know, a pot of Kokomi, um, Lieben, uh, something that costs one, and then they will do two um, uh, actions with their own field character. So in this situation where I have the chance to one-shot an enemy unit, uh, instead of drawing first, uh, which is usually the best thing to do, because, you know, having more cards in your hand uh, will give you a better idea of what to do with your turn. Uh, I will do a normal attack um, with the Geodude and see what happens. Usually, NPCs will switch characters around. Uh, they very often do weird character switches by the end of the turn. But against other players, there are times where you can take them off guard. So let's see if Nanaya Yumi uh, is stream sniping me. Yeah, uh, she, stream sniper confirmed. Uh, in this situation, you can decide what to do. Uh, card draw, set up your stuff. Personally, I kind of value a lot uh, the idea of dealing 5 damage to a character that is at 10 hit points just using the Geo Resonance Stone. Um, it's only doable with the Geo Resonance Stone and it's very valuable. With this deck, you really, really, really want uh, um, your... Um, opponent's character to be below 6 hit points. This will allow Noel to one-shot them uh, when she has the Gravestone. And now we already have two of those characters at 5 hit points, uh, which is a disaster for a deck playing against uh, a Noel combo deck. Uh, of course, our Geodude is taking a lot of damage, uh, he's not going to have a very good time, but he did an amazing job. Now, the second turn, we go back to a more normal um, uh, game flow, meaning that what we want to do is go to uh, Ganyu and start to generate energy for her, so that she can set up her burst. Uh, the dice gods are not uh, particularly kind to me every time that I play this game. Uh, there are a few options that we could do this turn, um, set up the artifact uh, uh, on uh, Noel so that when she starts hitting the other characters she will generate energy, but it's something that we can do later, because they are going to die, they are at five. Um, the only one we need to worry about a little bit is Yomiya, uh, real players uh, that will stay on Yomiya to generate energy. Uh, NPCs not so much, so don't worry about the quality of the gameplay, just see the flow of the deck uh, to see how it works. Here, due to the lack of uh, cryo dices, uh, I find it more valuable to set up uh, a bit of card draw and the dice generation, because uh, it's something that it's not always possible to do. So we use a pot of Kokomi first, didn't draw very good cards, uh, we didn't get any NRE this turn, we go to Ganyu, and see how the rest of the turn uh, evolves. Probably um, I would do something like a normal attack with Ganyu to generate an energy and then 
Okay, no, yeah, another the more opponent uh, is out of action essentially for the turn. Uh, we can set up the Transmo thingy. I, I'm terrible with names. That thing, this one. And we can put it on the field without having to worry about our opponent triggering it uh, uh, when it's their turn. So it will be that. That. Um, one left. Uh, could draw more or could set up that for later. So we can do this this turn and be happy. It's important for this deck not to have too many dead cards in hand. Um, the reason is that um, it's easy to overdraw. This deck has so much card draw uh, that you always need to pay attention to how many cards you're going to draw at the end of the um, of the turn. Because between Lieben triggering at the beginning of the turn uh, and the Li Yue Town uh, action thingy that gives you two cards at the end of the turn, uh, uh, Pot of Kokomi, you really draw a lot of cards. Uh, sometimes it's easy to overdraw, so you need to be a little bit careful. Uh, here we have free food, uh, no NRE, which is a little bit annoying. Can you draw NRE? No. We draw... Gravestone, which is not good for our opponent. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Her elemental skill is very valuable. Provides uh, energy reduction, energy reduction, damage reduction. Uh, we generate uh, one stack uh, for the Transmo thingy. Our opponent doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh, with only three cards in hand, uh, our opponent only has three cards in hand, I'm pretty sure there is no way um, she's going to be able to activate the Transmo thingy on her turn, which will waste our dices unless we had the limit Lieben on the ground. So we have more freedom in what we do, uh, knowing that it's pretty sure uh, that the next turn uh, is going to be the turn that we activate it and we will have a ton of dice. Uh, there is a world where the next turn could be the last one uh, for this match, so I want to deal a couple of damage uh, to Yomiya and see how things evolve from there. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking that it may be the last one uh, is uh, Yomiya is at 8. Uh, she so she's not too far off from being dead. And the other two characters are already within uh, Wolf's Greystone range. So I could recycle some of the stuff that I don't really care about too much to use Ganyu's Burst. Or I could just draw more cards. Uh... Yeah, let's play it. Hmm. <laughs> NRE <laughs> no longer is in my deck. Uh, this turn we want to try to um, injure Yomiya um, as much as we can. Uh, not great rolls, but I will keep free Geodices because uh, it can be useful. It can be useful. It's a bit annoying to have to use free um, uh, Omni Dices just for her burst, but it's something that we need to do. And then let's see what happens. Go with quick swap and um, Wolf's Greystone in hand and all the food available, uh, this may actually be the end of a turn. I mean, the end of a match. Because it's going to be free for, gra for Gravestone, then a free for the, um, for the elemental skill, then we generate dice. Then uh, a little bit will depend on what dice we get from the from the transmo thingy on the ground, and I do not believe that our opponent with the cards in hand can heal up uh, uh, Yumiya to a significant uh, degree. So I think we go all in. Let's go to Noel. We give her a gravestone. We use the elemental skill. GG
And that was a nice Noel turn. Insta give big everyone. Uh, this is a PvPA match that I had last night. I recorded it and I ended up que queuing up against one of the most popular decks uh, uh, that you can find when playing against other people, which is Collet Double Electro. Uh, I'm glad that I recorded it because in the match against the bot, uh, while I was going through the motions of the deck and how to set up everything, uh, we had a nice Noel one turn kill while this match ends in a completely different way uh, that will showcase to you what this deck can do um, out of nowhere, even when Noel is not really involved. I usually want to start with Ganyu, but going second I tend to prefer uh, Geodude, and also the fact that I started with the J Resonance card in hand uh, means that we can do some sneaky things uh, with the Geodude, because many people don't play around uh, the the resonant cards in general. A lot of people assume that when you have uh, uh, two dice left, uh, you're not going to do anything else on your turn. And this can lead to some bad situations. Uh, uh, because, for example, if your very, very important and valuable character is on the field and uh, at low hit points, uh, and you decide to leave him there so to have priority the next turn, and then your opponent uses a resonance card and your important character is dead, uh, you put your hand uh, at the top right of the screen and you click concede. And here, drawing this food right now activated my almonds even more, uh, because I was starting to think that Geodude uh, actually had a chance of making a big difference in this, uh, in this matchup. So, the reason why I decided to delay the card draw, uh, not playing the Liyue location card, uh, was because I wanted to have at least one of my opponent characters at 6, because even long term it's a nice threshold uh, for them to be at. And then the rest of my turn would have been decided by what my opponent uh, was going to do. Um, with Kolei on the field, uh, part of me would have really liked to hit her, but also I didn't want my opponent to immediately start doing uh, Dendro reactions uh, right away from turn 1 uh, during his active phase. So I decided to swap to Ganyu and, um, in order to delay the Dendro stuff at the end of the turn uh, with Fischl Trigger. So I can have priority on the following turn without having to worry too much about my character getting absolutely demolished now. My opponent has played a lot of cards, uh, which is good for them, uh, because the opponent was able to do a lot of stuff on turn 1. But it's also not terrible for me, uh, because it means there are fewer things I need to worry about. When your opponent has 6 or 7 cards in hand, you always need to think, oh my god, how many of those are food, how many of those are cards that can impact the, the fight, uh, the flow of the fight, and all that sort of stuff. When they have few cards, a little bit easier to handle everything. And this is again a situation where I didn't want to have Geodude on the field right away. I wanted to hide him a little bit, so I decided to essentially sacrifice Ganyu. Um, using her elemental skill, because I didn't see her lasting uh, very long anyway and essentially letting my opponent kill her and then move to Geodude and see where the match would go from there. So opponent only has one card in hand, meaning that there is not a lot that he can do. And what I guess he did here is that he saw my true energy and he reckoned my opponent cannot do anything. And by passing this turn, I will give three dice to Lieben and Lieben next turn will generate cards. And the opponent passed. And what the opponent was not expecting was this. Uh, the generation of an extra dice uh, plus the generation of two geo dices and um, Kolei getting insta gibbed. Uh, this was essentially the end of the match. Um, few moments after this, uh, uh, 
um, uh, the, the opponent uh, considered because uh, this is over. <laughs> this is absolutely over. Um, it, it was a mistake on our opponent because he had a lot of dices, so he could have very simply swapped, uh, very simply and safely swapped to another character, but he decided not to. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it was an overlook on his part. Um, he just decided that Collet was not a risk anymore at all. He didn't have anything to do, so he wanted to wait. Uh, or maybe it was a misclick. But regardless of that, uh, this is a thing that can happen when you play this deck. Now, this second match, uh, uh, I will have to play it uh, sped up a little bit uh, because it, it was very long. It took way more than 10 minutes. And the ending uh, is a little bit different uh, and it shows uh, essentially the other characters uh, uh, sacrificing uh, themselves just to give me enough time to collect uh, all the pieces for uh, Exodia Noel and, and, and let her go insane. The flow of the deck is always the same, basically regardless against uh, who you are playing. Um, do you want to set up your card draw and dig deeper and deeper into your deck? Um, and see where you go from there. You just want to be a bit careful about uh, the Geodude shenanigans because as, as I showed you, uh, you can do very interesting things uh, with the Geodude, um, with his sneaky, sneaky damage, uh, uh, especially when it's unexpected um, and you can use the Georesonance cards from hand. In general, all the hit points on the Geodude and um, Ganyu are sacrificable as long as they allow you to deal a little bit of damage to the opponent. Uh, in this specific case, the opponent has a unit composition that I find a little bit questionable. Like, I, I don't think that Ning Wang is a very good fit in the tech. Uh, it would have made a lot more sense to have someone like Bennett uh, or Xin Chu or um, something along those lines. But uh, at least the flow of the game uh, will show you uh, how the deck works uh, in matches that go on a, a little bit longer. You never need to think that you need to rush your combo um, if your opponent is not putting an insane amount of pressure on you. You can just take your time, do your things, uh, draw, uh, cycle through the food, cycle through your cards, uh, and you know w when the hit points of your opponent units are low enough um, and you put everything together, you can just go crazy. Here, Geodude lost uh, his shield very quickly, so I was not feeling very comfortable about uh, keeping him on the field, uh, because it does not have any form uh, of um, energy ger um, shield generation, damage reduction, and I'm, I'm not playing uh, his talent card in this deck, so he's not even able to, to regenerate the shield uh, after losing it. Now, here, my Ganyu is at 4 hit points, I would prefer her not to die, but with the stuff that um, Diluc is av has available, he, he will not be able to kill Ganyu. So what I was hoping was that that was the case, that my Ganyu would survive until the end of the turn, and then I would base my decisions for the rest of the turn uh, based on that. We now have a lot of cards in hand, which is nice. There are more options, uh, we can swap back to Geodude, uh, save Noel, but since I was able to stay at 4 hit points with Noel, I st uh, Noel? Uh, Ganyu, um, I was still feeling fairly confident that she was not going to get insta gibbed. Uh, I was at the danger of um, some shenanigans with the look, leave it all to me, but I, I decided not to play around it. Uh, I could have set up the burst now, but I, I took that occasion to just get rid of uh, Kea because I thought that with Kea down uh, and it would only be a couple of turns uh, until the jail, I mean, a couple of actions until the um, cryo stuff was gone, and so I didn't have to worry about it too much. Uh, one on one, the look is not going to take down uh, Noel. And I was not too worried um, about uh, uh, Ning Wan either. Uh, Ning Wan can be nasty. You need to be careful when uh, you play against Ning Wan because she can deal a ton of damage um, essentially out of nowhere using her burst. But in this case I was not too worried uh, because I had most of the pieces of the combo in hand 
and um, I had some defensive tools, I had some food, so the only thing that I needed to worry about was really play safe, be a little bit tanky, generate some shield, and just proceed to end the match uh, quickly. That's a nice chunk of damage, but it, it, it was not going to be enough. So in, in, in this case, uh, we won the match even without um, Wolf's Greystone, just through sheer damage. A bit of cheap damage from our um, little helpers, uh, Geodude and... Uh, uh, Ganyu and then Noel finished the jobs just through her own damage output. Now on screen you can see the full deck list and I will also put it in the first pinned comment uh, so it's easier to, to access it without having to go through uh, the whole video. I believe that this in general is uh, Noel's best archetype. Um, a combo deck that wants to draw cards as quickly as possible to reach the Exodia moment and just uh, let your brain release a lot of sweet, sweet endorphins while you one-shot stuff with Noel. Uh, the only problem that this deck ha has is uh, uh, it's a combo deck, so sometimes the combo will not work. You may die before then uh, if your ca if your hand is clogged of cards, like you draw all the food but you don't have NRE, um, you draw the pieces of the combo but you run out of. Uh, actual cards to draw and so you're slowly getting killed by some Ayaka Yomiya stuff, uh, it, it can happen. But overall it's a deck that I found extremely enjoyable to play and that requires a lot of thought. Uh, the amount of thought here is not just a matter of does the damage that I have in hand uh, um, cover the amount of hit points that my, that my opponent has. Uh, you have to do a lot of planning over the course of your turns and be able to determine correctly when to go off on Noel and when you keep stalling on uh, Geodude and Ganyu. But uh, it, it's a very solid deck. Uh, you are going to have uh, fun matches against uh, every opponent. Now the video is almost half an hour long. Uh, it turned out to be longer than expected, but I really wanted to give uh, a play-by-play -play showcase uh, against um, an NPC uh, to give you an idea of what happens turn by turn and the decision making that happens uh, while playing with this deck, uh, as well uh, as a couple of PvP matches. And I was quite happy with the ending of the matches because they allowed me to showcase how this deck can end uh, uh, each match, either through the Omega combo or through some sneaky Geodude shenanigans or from just grinding out uh, the enemy once Noel reaches critical mass. And I hope you found this video useful. If you did so, you can check out my other videos and you can also follow my streams because I stream uh, a couple of times a week here on YouTube. Uh, it's around midnight UTC on Monday and Thursday, uh, which uh, if you are in Europe it's uh, very late at night it's like 1 or 2 at night depending on your time zone uh, if you are in the US uh, it should be maybe your prime time maybe a bit before then and if you are in Asia it's going to be in the morning like early hours of the morning like 8 or 9 o'clock depending on where you live bye guys thank you for stopping by and take care